Hey, what's up guys? Nick Davenport here, AKA Mr. Mental Muscle. We have another episode in the Mind Body One channel. Now we're gonna talk about mental toughness. I know everyone talks about this term. It seems to be a catch-all expression that just means if things get hard, you can keep going. Now there's a lot more to it than that. And we talk about this a lot when we help our athletes and our performers in general get better. Now, when it comes to mental toughness, there's one athlete that comes to mind that he's the epitome of this word. That's Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Yeah, that's right. And now it's funny that he's aptly named the diamond because what makes diamonds? Pressure. Now someone who's under pressure has to be able to hold their own and withstand the adversity, the trials, the tribulation. And this guy's definitely seen it. In his UFC career, he's seen a lot of ups and he's seen a lot of downs. He started from humble beginnings. This is a picture of me right when I started training. I was probably about 200 pounds in that picture. Big transformation. He's made a name for himself. He's been a champion. He's beat some of the best champions ever to do it. So he's definitely proven his worth, but that didn't come easy. Now I've worked with him directly for six years. Now I worked on his mental performance in a variety of ways. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how we can go about enhancing mental toughness, but he on his own, he just has this type of resilience, this perseverance that he can't be stopped. But he plays into this by his own mindset. I've got knocked down, I've climbed back up like I said before, man, this is my belt, I earned this. Blood, I paid in full, this is mine. You know, adversity introduces a man to himself and I've been through it, man. And we help enhance this and you can do the same thing too because mental toughness is just not a all or nothing trait. You can actually enhance it, you can improve it, you can get better like any other skill. Now let's talk about it. Now there's three tiers we're gonna talk about when it comes to mental toughness in this video. It'll be personality, your thought processes, and how do you interpret failure. Now these three tiers are an exhaustive list and there's a lot more we can talk about, but specifically these three are something you can take into mind right now and you can easily enhance your mental toughness because most of this is understanding and assessing yourself and then changing what needs to be changed because behaviors are not finite, they're dynamic. They can go up and they can go down. So that's why when it comes to personality, a lot of people use this term, but they don't know truly what it means. What it really is is different characteristics and behaviors that set the tone for you and what you can do, your motivations, your ability to socialize with others or even adapt to the environment. Now, when we talk about mental toughness, these three specific traits are what we found to be the most correlative to someone who can get through diversity and handle tough situations. That's conscientiousness, emotionality, and extroversion. Now you wanna score high on conscientiousness, low on emotionality, and high on extroversion. Now conscientiousness, this is someone who's organized, driven, they have goals, they're able to follow through when things don't go their way, they're able to withhold back when it doesn't happen immediately. You're not necessarily gonna win the first time you try, you're probably gonna fail more than you win, and depending on what you're doing, whether it be school, sport, job, relationship, it's gonna be hard. It's a cumulative path, so someone who's high on conscientiousness can plan out that path, but also be able to adapt and adjust because they know that it may have to go backwards or even pivot completely because Let's be real, plans always are gonna change and it's never gonna be a cookie cutter straight line to your goal. Now, emotionality, this is someone who is a worrier, they're a stressor, they deal with anxiety, not the best, and someone who's high on emotionality, they're very sensitive to these worries and stressors. Now, you wanna be low on this trait because typically someone who is low, they're not afraid of physical harm. You can see someone like Destin, he's definitely not afraid of that, he's a battler, he doesn't say no to a challenge, and this will play into other factors of these three. Now, they also are someone who doesn't take little things and make them bigger. So if you're low on emotionality, you see something go wrong, you say, you know what? I can regroup and build upon it. But someone who's high, they're gonna be the person who's gonna turn a mountain into a molehill and think of the worst. And it's hard to overcome things when you always think it's not gonna happen or not gonna come out the way you need it to. Now, the last one is extroversion. Now, we hear this term all the time and a lot of people associated with being outgoing, social, talkative. That can be part of it, but when we look at extroversion, we're looking at something called social self-esteem and social boldness. Now, what these terms mean is that social self-esteem that's the person who's comfortable with showcasing their abilities around other people. They're gonna be the one to step up and take the chance. Now with social boldness, this is a leader. They're not afraid to speak up when things aren't the way they're supposed to be. They can take charge. So you can see how these play into each other. Now these three traits are something you wanna consider. Think how high you would be. Are you typically a person who falls back when things get harder? Are you a person that can stick to their goals and pivot when they need to change?
change. So if you are, you're probably going to be good on conscientiousness and score higher and probably low on emotionality. Also with extroversion, are you the one who can step up and take charge in front of a crowd? You can see how this is important for a high performer because we don't do most things in solitude when we interact with each other. Now the next tier is thought process. Now with my work with Dustin, we see a lot of different aspects of this. One is the straight up cognitive processing that's taking information in in real time, making decision, reacting, hand-eye coordination, working memory, being able to manipulate that information and do what you need to do. This is key, especially in a combat sport, because when you see he has to scan his opponent, what they're doing. Now, typical fight skills train this and enhance this, but we do different things that we can in real time enhance this different processing abilities. I mean, 10 years of fighting to really understand that. Four plus one, three plus two, five. I'm enjoying this whole process and I know what I need to do to prepare. And I'm still juggling it, but I, I'm having fun with it and doing it a lot better. Now, when it comes to other thought processes, there's something I talk about a lot is cognitive biases. Are you able to refute the information that comes in and says, you can't do this? Someone who's high on, say, pessimism bias, they're gonna think the worst. Yes, we're wired for anxiety and worry because it helped us stay alive. We made predictions and we evolved to be able to stay safe because of this, but we do that job too well and it causes us to worry more than we should. So you have to refute any thoughts. And what I know is with Dustin, he speaks a lot to himself with self-talk and understanding you're the champ you got this anything can happen no matter how prepared you are so that you know those nerves and feelings always are always around for me but besides that I know I'm better than these guys it's not wishful thinking it's reinforcing what he already knows he put in the work he says paid in full all the time that means you're able to put in the effort and just allow your abilities to do what they need to do so that's why overcoming those biases in your head those defeating thoughts and understanding where you are will help enhance your performance now the last one is interpretation of failure. This kind of goes hand in hand with the other two because with personality, someone who can handle and interpret failure as a benefit is gonna be low on emotionality. They're gonna be higher on consciousness because they're gonna be able to drive through it when it doesn't work out. Also, they're gonna be able to interpret failure better because they're gonna have higher cognitive flexibility. This is a skill where you can take one aspect of something and look at it differently. So you interpret a failure as a loss, sure. You can interpret it as defeat. You can interpret it as you'll never do better. You can interpret it as it's nothing but it's up to you. So you can see how they all play together because if you look at his career, almost every fight he's had, he's been the underdog. When he fought Habib back in 2019, he wasn't favored to win. Everyone thought the odds were against him and unfortunately he did get defeated. But guess what? He bounced right back. He fought Daniel Hooker. Then he went on a streak. He beat Conor twice and then got the chance to fight for the belt again against Oliveira. Once again, he was defeated in a very similar way that he lost to Habib. Now, most people, it gets in their head, not only did I lose, but I lost in the same way, but not him because he interpreted it as I can bounce back and do this again. Mental toughness is not just about being stoic or not being afraid. It's about understanding what you can be afraid of, what can break you out of your comfort, what can make you do worse and be able to see it as a challenge and overcome it. Because guess what? The very next person he fought was Michael Chandler who was on a tear himself. He had fought some of the similar opponents and beaten them. And this was something it was expected like, wow, it's gonna be a huge challenge. But once again, he interpreted the failure. And even in his fight, he had a round where he was dominated and a lot of people get deterred but that diamond mindset is not just a name, it's not just a gimme. He was able to take that loss in that round, flip it, push through, use his strengths, and beat Michael Chandler. Now, this is just a few aspects of how mental toughness can be described. Now, we can talk about this in so many different ways. Now, we have our course, Mastering Mental Toughness, which is available now, so we'll put the link below so you can check that out. So, this course is pretty comprehensive. It has eight modules with lectures, videos, assignments, and actually a training program so you can do different tasks yourself day to day. The ones I use with Dustin and many other of my top performers such as the military, law enforcement, CEOs, the list goes on. So check that out. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and get your mind right. I was just so prepared. Uh, and now I gotta wake, my, wake up and look myself in the mirror every morning with this result. And uh, if anything adversity has taught me in the past is when times are good, be grateful. And when times like this, be graceful.